right? I was on the Imperial Gunnery Forum, and it was on page 22. Craig T shows off his Max Rebo band. Now, the first time this ever entered my collection was only a few years ago. Never even, I just can't remember it as a kid. So I just want to have a bit of a discussion on the old Max Rebo band. Can I just stop you there, Jez? Yeah. You've said it twice now. Oh, what are you what yeah. are you calling it? Exactly. It's a Sai Snootles band. You're absolutely right. For some reason in my head I've always had it as the Max Rebo band. But it's Sai Snootles and the Rebo band, isn't it? It is, but we all see the Max Rebo band. So is this possibly the most mispronounced set of figures in the entire Star Wars collection? That's a really good point. This could be more heinous crime than Luke Skywalker farm boy, couldn't it? Well, yeah, poor old Cy Snootles, who is the lead singer of that band, gets relegated to the bloody organist. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's like seeing a drummer as a musician. You know, it just, it just, it's just not right. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point, because I've even typed up in all the search show notes, Max Rebo Band. And, um, yeah, it was only on further stuff here that I'm like, yeah, Cy Snootles. Great point. Great point, Rich. Yeah, just because of the lead singers, I mean, they have to be, they have to be named after them. There's like plenty of bands out there who are not. Dave Clark Five Strings thing, he was a drummer. Yeah. But it's it's written all across the box though, isn't it? Cy Snootles and the Rebo Band. It's 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 to my best of my knowledge, it's never Max Rebo Band. Anyway. Is that is that the same on both boxes? Because you had the shadow box, which is obviously Kenner, which I know it does sound that, but is it the same on the um the solid the box logo. from the yeah. logo? Yeah. Yeah. Band names is a really weird thing, though, because Mike Oldfield, Moonlight Shadow, sung by a chick. I was like, what? That name's not Mike. And it goes on to this whole thing with Cy Snoodles. For ages, I was like, well, I thought it was a woman. Why is it called Cy? Cy? What are your thoughts on this, Cy? Max Rebo band to me. Yeah, but are you named after a woman? What, what's going on? Cy? I'm not having that at all. Have She's you, got your she, legs green. Though. <laughs> She's got your lips, Stu. <laughs> He's got Stu's tummy. <laughs> <laughs> How very rude. <laughs> I love it. It's brilliant. And there was an interesting discussion somewhere online. Should it be part of a complete loose run of figures? Uh, and who was it that came up with the answer? They did it. They, they made it very eloquently. It was basically... Yes. They were a set of figures issued in the three and three quarter inch scale. So, yeah, of course. Just, just, of course it's just like a triple pack, isn't it? It's a three it pack. Is. They came together. They're, they're, they're figures. There's not many other play sets which come with physically loose figures, is there? No. Right. So, would you say that to complete your mint on card one, you need to have the blister version of this? Not necessarily the blister. It depends what you're collecting, doesn't it? If, if like me, you go. UK, so Palatoy Tri Logo, uh, then I'd say the the Tri Logo box set is just as valid as the blister pack. Which I would say the Shadow Box is a nicer display than the Tri Logo on this. Uh-huh. Very good, very good question, though, then. Rich. Yeah, very well. Stu, so you've referred to the Shadow Box. So, so, basic history of this one, mate. Just go through again the different packaging options. I mean, how many were there? Well, to be honest with you, I could. It's very difficult to research something like this because there's not a great deal on the production pieces. So you've got the Kenesh, which they refer to as the shadow box. Which that is the one with the, the window in it so you can see what's what. And then obviously Europe had the Tri-Logo solid box. Now, I know this came out on the, with Lily Leddy, but I'm assuming it was just the Kenner box. No, that's all my, the, the only two I was aware was the the shadow box blister pack and the Tri-Logo. I'm only was- aware that Leddy did it because the Leddy figures the variants of the leddy ones now th- th- this this is a variant that does is quite put them alongside each other they do look massively different like droopy is just dark all round. his pants are really dark so you can it's really noticeable rebo is really dark blue and his limbs you know no leddy rebo the limbs don't ever fade yeah so yeah i, uh, I yeah. saw that on the imperial gunnery did it so much better isn't it so just different type of plastic um just obviously none of the degradation that we've spoken about earlier on on this podcast yeah and sigh so obviously the um the spots are different colors aren't they and there's a few differences on on her as a lady but yeah 
It's interesting, actually. You refer to it as the Leddy, and yes, I had heard that the Max Rebo was was perma blue, and he was a really good, insane blue colour, and he stayed that way. But I've now seen two Trilogo boxes, and I had one of them, which had the figures still in the bags. They'd been opened, but they were still in the bags. And he was that insane blue. But I've got no reason to believe that he had been acquired separately. And then someone on Facebook again the other day dug out a set that they'd had in their loft for goodness knows how long, I don't know, 10, 15 plus years and showed it up. And again, the Max Rebo was that insane blue. So I'm just wondering whether there was any overstock that made its way over to Europe. I would have thought that would have been unlikely, to be honest with you, from Mexican factory, or whether they were producing them perhaps in Spain with the same production materials as used in Mexico. But it would appear that there are those that fade and those that don't in trilogo boxes as well. Yeah. So this is one which obviously comes with three characters, a little piano, bathtub, and a woodwind instrument, a couple of mics. Rich, you know, the, as you know, we've got reproductions or repro. Uh, what, what's out there, mate, with regards to repro items? You definitely can't get uh, repro. No, sorry, sorry, M- sorry. The clue is in the question. Um, repro. Uh, what's out there with regards to repro microphones and instruments? Um, you've got to be really careful with these because of the price of the flute and the mic stands. They are, you know, they're obviously going to be repro items out there. So both of the black and the silver types of flute and mic stands have all been reproduced so you've got to be really careful and they're incredibly difficult to check because according to the, the TIG guide the flow test doesn't always work for these the biggest clue and if you've got uh, repo versions of these is the plastic itself and, and the feel of the plastic because the repo ones are very brittle and if you if you feel like giving them a bit of a squeeze, they, they will snap very easily. And not too many people are wanting to try that with original weapons, but uh, yeah, it's, it's all to do with the brittleness of the plastic. Now, what I am a little bit surprised at, although I'm not surprised nobody's made a, a rep or piano yet, or certainly not a wave one, but the skirt on size noodles, I would have thought that there would have been rep or ones of those yet, but I can't find any information at all on the skirt, which uh, I just thought was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, but Jez, what I wasn't wasn't aware of when I was researching rep items is that on TIG they've claimed that if you have a silver flute, you should have black stands. And if you, yeah, and if you if you've got black flutes, you should have silver stands yeah. to make the second. Company. And, and I was never aware of that. No, Rich, I, I think you'll agree, mate. This on researching this on the Imperial Gunnery is probably blow my mind more than any of the other repro or information bits on on TIG. This is just, they have put so much work into this with regards to, as you said, Stu, as well, the identification between the Kenner and uh, uh, Mexican Leddy versions. It just gives you a full rundown of exactly what you need to look for, be it a, a, a cream head feather or the sort of more white grey head feather on sliced noodles. Uh, it just goes into so much detail. It's just... To, to, to quote it all would be an injustice because I, I really would like to um, identify them as, as a great area for people to go and check out. Yeah, without now, a doubt. Just, this, this isn't to do with the toys, but um, didn't you always think that they had all died at the in Jedi? Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't. Yeah. Right? When Jabba died, they all, uh, they all went their separate ways and Sar Snootles went on to a life of minor singing gigs Droopy McCall, now he wandered off into the desert never to be seen again. And um, let me just this have a in, look. This is in the Tears from Jabba's Palace book, isn't it? Oh, Leo Freebo. Now he became a wealthy restaurant owner of a chain of Max's flank house franchises on seven different worlds. I want to know who's making this stuff up. Oh, I read <laughs> something about that as well, didn't he? Wasn't he something or other that when he shook your hand, he tasted you at the same time? No, that's a different book you're reading, Jez. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, no, I've definitely seen that whilst I was looking at this. It was really weird. Because one of my assumption was that they were just going to snuff it on the sail barge. But apparently they also appeared in later droid episode, or at least one droids episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, that's quite interesting. Earlier droids episodes, be it. Because the droids was, um, the Rebo band was planned to come out, wasn't it? In a droid's packaging. Yeah. 
Yes. In fact, you can see that, can't you, on the collector's archive? Hang on a second. Rich, what are you on about earlier Droids episode? You're gravely mistaken. Well, Droids wasn't set after Return of the Jedi, was it? I don't know. Was it not? Well, no. Was that definitely not? Wasn't it? I thought it was set before Return of the Jedi. Were they still, were they still a band in the Droids cartoon? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yes. I've seen it. I've okay, only ever so that, seen that, that, that answers it then, because it, it states that the three of them never, when they departed, that was it between the three of them. Ah, but that, that's not canon anymore, though, Stu. Now the tales, tales from the Jabba's Palace is it more? Record. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't know. I've, I've always just assumed that the droids' cartoons were set before Jedi. But did any of you guys read this? Because whilst doing a little bit of research about this Max Rebo band, and this is the Max Rebo band. There's a lot of stuff online about the Max Rebo Band as opposed to, you know, Cy Snootles and the Rebo Band. So maybe it is Max's Rebo Band and Cy was just a guest singer, possibly. Uh, But anyway, it goes on to say the Max Rebo Band, also known as the Max Rebo 12 and originally Evar Obus and his Galactic Jizz Whalers. No Where have you got that from? No, seriously. If you if you Google Max Rebo Band, right, and you look at it, and it's on sort of Wikipedia, Wikipedia, mm-hmm. and all that, I I first read that, and I I just thought, no, right, cut and paste. That's going into my notes, and then I saw it on a different site as well. Ever, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I have to back you up here and say that that, that from from um, the original toy, which is apparently the only time they ever mentioned it much or original things back in the you know early 80s it seems, seems to me that max rebo was the leader of the band all the rest of them were every single one of the apparently there's like 12 members of the band now they've, they've added a few more remember when they did the special editions yeah. a few more people got added in yeah. and every single toy for now that from from that moment is now max rebo band yeah. So it is the Max Rebo band, as in after that. I think I think it's only only time they've ever said it was Cy Snoodle. So they must have changed something somewhere, or George Lucas got upset and decided to uh, to clamp down on this. And uh, yeah, he is he is supposed to be the the leader of the band. And uh, as someone rightly said, Cy Snoodle is just a member of the band. Just a singer, yeah. But Cy Snoodles was dating Jabba's um, Zero the Hut. Jabba's yeah. Is it a cousin? Was it? Clone Wars. And used to um, used to work for Jabba, didn't she? She used to do some some dodgy dodgy dealings. Yeah, if you watch Clone Wars, it, uh, it's a uh, rather interesting storyline. And uh, Zero the Hut's very camp, exceedingly camp, and it's kind of like purpley, a purple hut. <laughs> yes, I've just checked up on Droids here, and it's actually set before a New Hope. Is it wow. really? Mm-hmm. I never knew that. I knew it was before Jedi, but I didn't realize it was that early before Star Wars. Mm. Right. Okay, I just needed a check hump on this, all right? So I've just Googled... Oh, God, I didn't, I, I didn't think before I've typed this. So yeah, I just, uh, I just according to the special edition DVD, it's actually written the Max Rebo Band in the scene titles. So that's yeah. right, the first time it's mentioned. No, the reason I'm speaking with a disappointed voice is I'm disappointed in myself because I didn't think this through to the finish. Um, I just typed Max Rebo Jizz and searched... Um, oh God! So, but my, but <laughs> is it blue? But, well, it, there is um, in Wikipedia, jizz, um, and that could be a new name for me. Uh, oh, jizz said is it. an upbeat, swinging genre of music, most notably performed by Fergin Dan and the Modal Nodes and the Max Rebo Band. Other notable jizz bands include Babola, Bake, and it goes on and on and on. Subgen- subgenres of jizz included the jizz whale and obeyed and glitz. Also, the music from Jats was reminiscent of or in some ways similar to jizz. And then it talks about various jizz instruments. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> instruments producing jizz, jazz. There's, oh, dear. Jazz, can I ask a quick question? Is the, is the <laughs> jizz whale a, um, like a bit of a common sperm whale? <laughs> no, no, seriously. Um, this is... Oh, dear. Can you remember a uh, celebration? I think it was... serious saying the word jizz whaling. How do you blow? How do you blow a jizz instrument, Jess? Oh, it gets worse. Right, some of these jizz. Seriously, this is Star Wars Wicked. Um, <laughs> jizz instrument. Um, there's the clue horn. There's the oh. jizz box. No, there's it's... the gazin string drum. Um, there's the peel rod. 
<laughs> Seriously. Oh, what on earth is a Slitherhorn? Anyway, um, so I, 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 think you stick, I think if you stick the Slitherhorn in the jizz box. <laughs> <laughs> this is just all wrong. So then, then you never get away. Right. But this is. Jizz, it, it's Celebration Anaheim. Remember when the Fangirls Going Rogue podcast did a whole Fangirl flail? Yeah. I think at the next celebration, you need to come up with a jazz flail. Is is that word commonly used for what we're talking about in other countries, or is it very British? I really don't know. Soon find out. We're, we're Americans and Australians refer to. <laughs> anyway. I, it's, I think it is. Best, best conversation ever. <laughs> so, so, we've done the repro weapons thing. <laughs> Moving on. So, um, yeah, bringing it back down to uh, reality. Right, guys, never had this as a kid. Did any of you guys see this in the UK shops at all? Was No. You know, yeah, loads of them. Was I, had them like packaging, yeah, but... I had them as a kid, yeah, definitely. Oh, what? Really? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, definitely did. You see a lot of them boxed, I should think, because it's not a particularly playable toy, is it? That's as exactly a child. my point. That's exactly my point. No. I, I saw this as I was looking at it, and I found the Kenner TV advert. Rebo's got the beat, and the band plays on. You can relive it all with Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. Introducing Size Noodles and the Rebo Band. Jabba the Hutt action plays it sold separately. Play it again, Size. Starring Size Noodles. Goofy McCool on clarinet. Max Rebo on organ. Rib, rib it, Rebo. <laughs> Dance, Droopy. It's your last soul, Snoodles. Whoa. New Size Noodles and the Rebo Band. Jabba the Hutt action plays it sold separately. From Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. But guys, I never saw a Palatoy TV advert. There's not one that I can see online. I can't remember seeing this. I mean, that, what a cracking advert that was. But I cannot remember seeing a Palatoy advert at all. I, I can't remember this. Rich, did you actually play with it or was it just shelved? Uh, it probably was just shelved. I probably just had it in the corner when, when I had my Jabba's uh, thrown. But it, it, but it was a three-pack. You know, that, that's why we bought them. You got three figures. And um, if, I, if I had the try logo one, which I probably did do, you, you had that big poster as well inside the dry logo box, so it, it was a, it was a good set. I definitely remember having Max Rebo and the piano. I definitely remember that. It is a great set. It is a great set as a as a collector. I think it's um, brilliant. Well, I'm going to buy one. I've got one box. Haven't you got one at all? I've got uh, quite a few bits and pieces loose knocking around, but yeah. I never remember it being in shops at all. No, I, I, I think the first time I saw it was. Probably like about five years ago. Never came into my uh, into my path ever. There's quite a lot of. Um, I'm sure you're about to come on to like the oddities, but um, one of the best best pieces of Sigma and it's the piece that I'd most like to own that I still need, and that is the the Max Rebo music box. Um, be interesting to know whether that's classed as size snootles and the Rebo band. I have to check that at some point. But they do a music box of it, and the colours on it are incredible. It's a great, great piece of Sigma. They don't come up too often. But they popped up on a few um, Kim Cracky type pieces, didn't they? It was a, they were on a comb. They were, you're right, yeah. Another and item. Adam Joseph badge, wasn't it? That's one of the badges. That's right, yeah. yeah. There's, not, there's, there's not tons of stuff on it. I mean, I was looking around the, the archive. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot, yeah, apart from outside of stickers and things like that. And uh, paraphernalia like that. There's not um, wasn't many figurines. I said I, I remember seeing that that uh, bit of Sigma looked really cool actually. Yeah, it's a lovely place. How, how bizarre though that were brought up droids. Why would those three have appeared in a droid series? Why why did they do the crossover? Um, because they didn't really have a mass appeal, did they? None of us were going. Oh yeah, I want to be size noodles. I want to be Max Rebo. Because they weren't the main characters, Rich. I imagine. I mean, anything that, that's that's a periphery character would be easy to get into that show because I mean, there's, there's no, they're not going to infringe on, you know, they're not going to do any toys of them, they're not, they're not going to be licensed or anything. Whereas you couldn't put Princess Leia in because you'd have to go and get, you know, major permission and voice actors and all that sort of stuff. Whereas there's the, uh, a band, yeah, stick him in, that'd be all right. Yeah. No, I think no, Jez, I, 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 I think don't Jez has tried to be Droopy McCall. He's <laughs> gone with his haircut. Yeah. Yeah, you had Boba Fett, you know, you, you had the A Wing pilot. 
and there were four more obvious characters that they could have put. They could have put a weak way in there, or they could have put uh, a clatu or something like that in there. It's just it's an odd thing to put in the a kid show. Well, well, I guess thing. they were well, inoffensive. They were they were sort of friendly, neutral, and kind of funny looking. And they were bands, but in music. Yeah, exactly. When you saw them in the in the film, they were always seen as you know a bit of a comedy kind yeah. of. View. So, oh, look at those! They look really funny and cute. You know, it's yellows and blues, and there's a piano there, and it's nonsense. I mean, it's an easy, easy thing for kids to find. But you don't want to put you know weak ways in there. Poor weak way, leave them alone. Sitting in a silent pit, being chomped up. But the thing is, we we collect action figures, uh, and it's all about the action. Now, when you think about Star Wars, modal notes, did they produce those? Did they produce that band? No, of course they didn't. Of course they didn't, because we didn't want them. You know, they just relegated them to the back of the cantina place, didn't they? Just to add some ambiance and some mood. And it just did appear that what they were doing was just churning out more and more figures for the Jedi run, just saying, all right, yeah, we just need to produce this, need to produce this. Not necessarily coming up with the figures which we wanted. And they give us a band. I mean, come on, that's not going to flick your switch as a kid. Rich, what made you, apart from you said it was a three-pack, I mean, did you did you have every figure as a child? Because I'm sure I would have seen other ones which would have grabbed my attention and, and filled, ticked more boxes than this band oh, the no. dignitary it had been going for that rich would have been oh but his favourite figure I didn't I didn't have any of the last 17 but what was probably likely was that with my parents being a bit frugal with money it would have been a case of that's Star Wars that's cheap there you go that's what you're getting for Christmas and a poster of course don't forget the poster don't forget the poster yeah, like you Rich I, I didn't have much in the way of vehicles because they were flipping expensive uh, but I did also have the Rebo band and I don't actually remember playing with it much at all and if I did it would have just been Max because he was cool and fat and he had his own little Dalek piano thing Pete mate you've been uh, getting jizzy uh, sorry jizz you've been, you've, <laughs> you've, 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 on the mind. <laughs> you've been getting busy on uh, Tracker you looking up uh, some prices for us buddy I have, and it's not very exciting, sadly. There's, I mean, I look at the, the movement between the prices over, because, I mean, Trekker kind of goes back to about 2014 now, so it's trying to get very good data. And it really hasn't shifted a lot. I mean, I'd say, I mean, let's just take, just for example, sort of regular Power Toy Return of Jedi A1, the, and boxed, I mean, the average price has gone from about three years ago from about sort of 75, 80 pounds, and it's currently averaging about 90 now. There really isn't a lot of movement on it. Obviously, top end stuff will move a little bit if it's you know real mint sealed and that sort of stuff. But I mean, for example, a loose uh, a, a loose version of it runs in as an incomplete, uh, still about just under fifty quid. I mean, it's not not a, not an outrageous amount of money, really. You know, it's unspectacular, and there's lots of them. I mean, there's plenty of them. I mean, there's been hundreds of them, and it is averaging at fifty quid for loose. The only spectacular piece of news is there was actually a recorded Lily Leddy loose set. Sadly, it did link to an eBay page, but the pictures are gone. Uh, but that went for uh, 365 quid. And that's the highest I can find of ungraded Max Reba band prices, which is quite sad, really. It's, it's not an exciting price-wise item, and the price does not grow very, very much. So you, you're in there. Pete, did you come across any pricing data for the Blue Harvest Droopy McCool piece or no, pieces? It's, it's pretty it's pretty standard stuff on, on Tracker where you've got it just covers the um, the loose version, the Kenner Canada A, the Power Toy Return of Jedi A, um, and standard Kenner. And it's just and then just I said the one Lady Lady one. I said there's just one in the three years that it's been been recording information. So, no, not really. Um, it doesn't go into that sort of depth. But, yeah, so prices are unspectacular. Get yourself a nice loose one, 50 quid. Get yourself a box one for in decent condition, around about the if it's the Canada A version, around about £155. Uh, if it's the Power Tour Return of Jedi A, the highest has been 372 and the average is £90. So you can easily get hold of one. 
and there's plenty, plenty of them. They come up about once a week, according to Trekker. Mm. Mm. I've seen adverts for the flute alone, people asking 30 plus pounds just for Droopy's flute. And the, the, the mic stands themselves do anywhere between 10 and 15. So it's really surprising to hear that you can pick up a, a full loose one for, for that money. Yeah. I think it's. I think that that goes with the grain, doesn't it? I mean, you you can you can go out and buy an Attack Money and Falcon for, you know, not ridiculous amounts of money, complete. But if you're after the constituent parts, like the chin guns, people are asking like you know, twenty five, thirty, forty quid for each one. So yeah, it's very it true. It doesn't really add up if you're going to put it together. People know that the parts are wanted, so they're going to charge you lots. I mean, I mean, I bought one probably about three, no, probably about two years ago now. And I got it because it was an auction that ended early in like an afternoon. And I got the whole thing for 25 quid. It was just it was ridiculous, really. And then it's all mint and nice. Uh, someone just ran the auction at the wrong, wrong part of the day. So, I mean, I got it well under the average, but I said, even now it's, it's not that high. It's not growing outside of, you know, sort of, it, it, it looks to be growing about five pound a year on average. Right. Loose. Go and get your work south one because they're easy to get hold of according to, to, the, to the stats. They're quite easy. <laughs> and any, any version you want apart from Lily Leddy is, uh, is easy available somewhere. There was a post on Rebel Scum, which made me laugh because I go back a few years. Um, want to buy any Max Rebo band prototypes? Again, Max Rebo, not Cy si The title says it all. I'm a Max Rebo focus collector and have all the production pieces, so now I venture into the strange and wonderful world of pre-production. Come on, guys and girls. I know someone has something they picked up on a whim that is just gathering dust. Anyway, thanks for looking. And then loads of time goes by, and then just the only other post is bump. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's got anything so this chap you know a few years back said he was a max rebo band focus collector and i thought oh poor chap um because there was obviously not a great deal there was there was nothing on his thing about prototype stuff and um so there's, there's not a great deal but sire i asked you to go out and see what you could find with regards to cool pieces yeah as you say there really isn't a great deal is there and i i wonder how long that took him to to complete his post his production focus, not long, I wouldn't have thought. The only piece I could find was the Blue Harvest Droopy McCool, which I know you've discussed it in a previous show. The Blue Harvest items were basically made out of sort of Dynacast resin, but the thing was they weren't really pre-production because they're cast in a blue resin as opposed to the stuff that Kenner at the time was using, which was a greener resin. Uh, and Kenner didn't use this blue resin until 1989 or after, I think it was. So what it transpired was some Kenner employees had found a load of the old four-ups from the, the micro machine line and all the rest of it, and they'd found the, the, a couple of the three-and-three-quarter-inch molds and they'd created these uh, hard copies as such uh, of certain bits and pieces and, and figures and droopy mccool was one of them so there is a blue harvest droopy mccool out there which is interesting because that's although they're a lot cheaper than the genuine resin hard copy would be they're still four figures. I think the last time one sold, or I remember one being discussed, was a good couple of years ago, and that was over $1,000 for something that is essentially a fake and a forgery. Yes, it's been cast with the original mould, but it's been done, what, five years after Star Wars was being made in the factory? I mean, that's, that's a little bit reminiscent of the old Toy Tony scandal, really, except there it's all fake materials it's all much later materials toy tony at least on the whole was using genuine parts and bubbles so how is it that the trade in blue harvest is considered okay and yet we've seen a lot of disputes at the moment about the trade in toy tony so just an interesting parallel but that was it bringing it back to the subject the only piece i could find was the blue harvest droopy mccool right so these blue yes, harvests, you're seeing, sorry, you're seeing that was the blue harvest considered as okay because it's not. There's a huge sphere of the collectors that won't even touch them. Is there? I, I yeah, haven't yeah. seen much. I haven't seen much people sort of deriding it. I mean, yes, it's a fake. People got sacked. It was done to deceive. People got ripped off. But they are still very desirable. Uh, uh, well, if they weren't, people wouldn't be paying four figures well, for them. But it's interesting yeah. you say that there's uh, a split in it. 
They're only desirable because the hard copies are so bloody expensive and so few. These are much more obtainable. So, you know, that, that that's the only reason they are desirable. You could say that about a lot of the, the toy Tony stuff, though, couldn't you? The German car back stuff. The originals are, are few and far between. Um, some of them don't even aren't even known to exist, are they? You can justify... The, the, what I'm saying is you can justify the price somehow, but it, it boils down to the fact there is a demand and, and people collect them. But what else is there at the moment? What, there's, there's another thing which is slightly troubling, which I've seen whilst I was looking and, and doing a little bit of research for this. Another trick which has been employed by certain people which could um, potentially fox someone when it comes to purchasing. Blue dye. In particular. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we're not going to go into the ins and outs of this, but we need to make sure people are being really careful, actually, if they see a really, really blue Max Rebo out there, you know, at various different trade stores or, or, or wherever, that you must have a really, really good look at this and, and turn it over and have a little look amongst all the creases and stuff to see if this is actually one which has been re-dyed because there are a few people doing that at the moment. And bearing in mind that a lot of people want a decent coloured blue one if you haven't got a leddy. You know, my limbs have massively faded on mine, and it's one thing which I do want to upgrade. But there is now a bit of a thing for people dying their uh, Max Rebos, which is a bit concerning. I tell you so much, as I'm far happier about my Rebo going light blue than I am about anything white going yellow. It really doesn't bother me halfway mm. anywhere near as much. Yeah, do you know what, Rich? Just looking at my collection now, yeah, I mean, it does bother me, but you're right, it would bother me less than something going yellow. So, uh, yeah, I mean, imagine having a really, really dirty yellow shuttle. You know, I'm talking real dehydrated shuttle. Well, I would just feel a total embarrassment if I had one of them. Yeah, yeah, really, really would. And also, I mean, not quite as embarrassing as being named after a female skinny pot belly alien who can't even sing. I mean, that would be bad. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I just dropped off and just were you saying something? <laughs> and, and didn't didn't Uncle Owen pretty much waste the time and got burnt alive? Hey, what? Seeing like Sai McOwen. That's a bit of <laughs> It was Rich. You were doing so well. <sighs> He always tries a little bit too hard sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's like a McDonald's on Tatooine. Um, God, sorry, I, Rich, I, don't try and give me a second gag. I'm still trying to figure <laughs> out your first one. <laughs> so finally, I was looking through all my collecting books and various different things to see what I could find. On, on pre-production or, or bits and pieces. And the only thing I could see was in Gus and Duncan's uh, pre-production book, there was a Rebo signed sample. So not pre-production, but a, a signed sample, which is obviously your your production one with just the sticker on. It was Sice Noodles and the Rebo Bands, 22nd of February, 1984. And there's a note on it saying, need to minimise the resin marks on the microphone, which I thought was pretty cool. But I haven't seen a great deal out there. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, is see if we can um, hook up with the inaugural member of the Vintage Rebellion Podcast Alliance. The Rebel Alliance. And, uh, and see if he can help us out with a little bit more information. Hello, Chris Jorgulius here again, recording for the Vintage Rebellion Podcast. I'm going to do a little bit of background on some uh, toy development. This time we'll be talking about Sice Noodles and the Max Rebo and Droopy McCool, the uh, Rebo Band, and I guess just to get in a little bit, this toy line, this this set was actually first shown in the 1984 Kenner pre-Toy Fair catalog, where they talk about them being action figures, and the box clearly says action figure set. I know some people somehow don't consider these part of the line because they weren't individually carded, but you know it makes sense that these were sold and created as a band, as a full set. So they are part of the line. They have holes in their feet. They are action figures, whereas the Tauntaun and the Trash Monster are not action figures, but that's a discussion for another day, and there's never any... Uh, consensus on that anyway so 
And just to talk a little bit about that, I know that the it seemed early on the Droopy McCool and Max Rebo, their design stayed pretty consistent. But uh, Size Noodles actually early on had um, the leg design had four toes instead of five. So the front three were a little look more like a bird foot, more so, more pointed. And the three three front toes were splayed out a little wider, and then there was just a single toe going to the rear. But um, the design was more unstable that way, so they changed it to the design we have now with the five toes. And um, I know her, her eyes were a little bit longer, and her horn was pointed forward. So they made some revisions to that character. And um, in the end, it was a pretty good uh, rendition of it. The uh, I know that they did some concepts on the microphones. Um, there was a concept where they took a Emperor's Royal Guard force pike with staff. Um, there was one molded in black, and they bent the end of it. And then at the other end, they used a little clay clay to make a base and they had mocked up a microphone using a black uh, emperor's royal guard staff uh it's pretty pretty interesting idea um so as i said uh first shown in the 1984 pre-toy fair catalog but um when it came to 1985 pre-toy fair it was still in there um as you know it and but in 1986 the uh, 1986 toy fair catalog uh, was was showing the Max Rebo, uh, I'm sorry, it, it's it, the Size Noodles and the Rebo band set in droids packaging. Um, that was something that was a really shock to many collectors when they first saw it. It shows the uh, set just in a blue droids logo set. No physical prototypes of that have ever turned up that I'm aware of, um, but we do have these photos from the catalog. It looks pretty pretty sharp in that blue box. They were on the cartoon. They... Um, and, and some of the model drawings that have turned up for the droids cartoon, the the the, uh, the characters are detailed out. Even their their uh, accessories, their their microphones have been detailed out in uh, model cell drawings from Lucasfilm. So they definitely were incorporating that into their cartoon, which is definitely t- designed to sell toys. You know, you can watch that cartoon and see many different Kenner toys explicitly on the screen like that. So that was neat. It never came out in the droids packaging, as you know, 1985, and then 1986, it was completely gone. So um, I don't know if it sold through 1985 or they just abandoned it at that point. But it's a uh, it's a pretty cool set. A lot of care. A lot of collectors love it, and um, hope you learned something from that little bit of background. Thank you. The Rebel Alliance is too well equipped. Chris Trigulius, thank you so much for sending us that information. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that is fresh news to everyone with regards to what we've just heard of the, of the concept stuff. Lads, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think that just summed up everything that I believed of the Kenner Factory when uh, when Chris said that they just took that Empire's Royal God staff and bent it and added a bit of putty on. It, that was just, you know, I can picture that in my mind's eye now. Somebody's grabbing that and going, that looks like a mic. I'm just going to add this, add that. It's it's just a, it's such a simple thing, but it's such a work of genius. I found that little bit there absolutely fascinating, and that's why it's fantastic getting the likes of Chris on this show because not one of us knew that. I've never read it anywhere. I've never seen it anywhere. You know, and thanks, Chris, for sharing your knowledge. It makes this podcast so much better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when he when he was saying that about the microphone, yeah, yeah perfect, and the size noodles as well. Not just the feet, the toes, but you know, the eyes and the horn. Yeah, Chris, without that knowledge, as you say, Rich, it just it just wouldn't be the same. So, thank you so much. We are really indebted to the Vintage Rebellion Podcast Alliance. Something truly special. I really want to see this band in a droids box now. I'm gonna to have to go and hunt one of them, some pictures online. I think because that sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, very clear to see on Star Wars Collector's Archive, mate, and uh, we'll put a picture of that definitely on the Facebook page. I mean, Chris had sent me a message saying, oh, um, you know, do you think people will mind the fact that there's no images or that there's not an image for them to see? But, you know, when it comes to describing pieces like that, I don't think we necessarily need the image. We can all just visualize it, and uh, and that's certainly good enough for me. So, yeah, once again, thanks very much. You could always make one, Jez. 
<laughs> Challenge not accepted. <laughs> you know, we, we, so we all know who the artistic person is, and that's Pete. So, uh, yeah, maybe I should uh, pass that one on to Pete. 